I'm back with the crack man Yo. and some special guests in the studio today. Yes. I yes. like this. Not just one. You went for a double whammy here yeah, today. You know, I, I, Richard Lopresto and I have talked uh, back and forth for years together. And uh, he, he's also uh, one of my good friends. Best, also good friends. But it's amazing we've never crossed paths. Wait, wait. So, like, this is the first time you've met I've in person? Never met him. Come on. No. I, haven't even, I, don't think I, I don't think I even talked to him on the phone. And we text back and forth. For uh, how long have you been texting? I don't know, five, six years. <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. Sorry. So let's bring in Rich first and then Jimmy also. Um, let me ask you guys. Let me, let me ask you. Am I saying it right? Um, we, we've never met. Of course, we never talked. Except for we talk a little bit now that you were coming on the show. Yes, yes, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah we started maybe what about a month or so ago. Maybe? Yeah, yeah, no, but I, I've known of you for years. And uh, do, do you live in town? I do. That's embarrassing. What? I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you, oh, you live here in Vegas. Sorry. How can we not have gotten yeah, together? I do. Oh. Oh my wait, God. You know, wait, 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 wait. We all go to the same restaurants too. And we go to the same same restaurants. restaurants. What Italian the hell's going America? On? Yeah. Wait a minute. The, oh God. Five Pierre. or six years, and he lives yeah. in town. Yeah. Not one meal. No, it's amazing. Oh, Bill. Only years. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. Do you we live here too? Do you live in town too? Yeah. What? Oh my God. Yeah. Come on. Jesus. Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on. Thanks for being with us. Thanks and pleasure. the reason why I wanted to bring you on because I'm a I'm. John and I both are giant baseball fans. Yeah. Um, we, we love baseball compared to the other sports going and growing up. Uh, baseball fans. John grew up a Dodgers fan. I grew up a fan. Yeah, probably the Mets. I guess the Mets more than the Yanks because, you know, being from where I'm from, everyone rooted for the Yanks. So I was always – I'm always an underdog guy rooting for the underdog. And the Mets was hit. <clears throat> so it was nice to get the 86 Mets at least we had in there. Um, some of the – Specials on the 86 Mets are unbelievable. That's out, too. Oh, my God. Yeah. Those guys were partying and going crazy. We didn't know that being behind the scenes. Right. So, anyway, um, what, now what's, what do you have there? Sin City. What is that? Which, what is shirt you have on? uniform for uh, God's team, the Sin City Angels. Okay. And Where, um, Where's God located? i got to go talk to him. He's uh, everywhere. Oh, okay. He's located <laughs> everywhere. Nice. And... Uh, we got to have conversations, though, what's going on he in the country. I don't think you see what's going uniforms. on in New York and stuff. Yeah. 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 Me and Richard put them together. And there's nice. also the Las Vegas and what is that one? Neon Kings. Wow. Which is uh, the Devils team. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, right, we got both sides. we got John's team. That's good. Um, what, what? <laughs> John's on a little delay. I just got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was no good. Problem. Yeah. What, what, what is the – now, that's the book in the background. Yes. Sir. So that star, Richard sent me that to my, uh, my my studio about five years ago. Is that when the book was about five years? Yeah, it was actually first publishing was 2017. That okay. was the first edition. And nice. It's amazing how people try to take advantage of you in the publish industry. I had never oh, wow. experienced that. On sports right. betting, I'm used to it. Right. But I'm not used to it from like c- civilians. Like that in are, what way? The, the sure. actual deal? Well, yeah. Well, let's say I had to threaten two publishers with lawsuits, my attorney, because. They were trying to rob me, and we had to threaten them with a class action suit. And then they gave me back my money in like less than five days. I was really fortunate to have a fabulous attorney in Los Angeles that was friends with my mentor, Jerry Schaefer, who's since deceased. Oh, wow. Okay. Jerry's up in heaven watching Sorry about us. That. Yeah, that's okay. Thank tell, you. Tell everyone what's your book about. This is, this is going to be interesting to John, too. Tell okay, him what your book's I'll about. I'll tell you. Listen to this. This is an amazing story. So I have a late, I was born and raised Roman Catholic. Yep. And a lady friend of mine who was a great gal named Mary Fabiel, she was a super beautiful woman and beautiful girl, she invites me to church. So I go to church the first time, and I'm like, maybe it's a scam, you know, it's all the music and all this stuff. And I felt, though, such a joy in my soul from going. And it sounds corny to say, but it, the, whole, the whole thing I'm telling you is true. So I, so I sit there, and, and I go back a second time, and I'm sitting next to Mary and her family, and I said, Mary... God just asked me to, he's telling me to write a story, and he's telling me what to say in it and stuff. So she looks at me and goes, I, best, I guess you better do it, right? So I said, yeah. So it took me seven years to write it. I finished it in a wheelchair, and uh, I showed it to my mentor at the time, and he goes, this is really good. He says, we got to make this into a movie. I said, that's what you know, God and I were hoping. So that's, that's the story of Old Timer's Day, and I finished it in a wheelchair. I was hurt real bad. What was wrong? Car accident? Says, no, I actually uh, I sprained my right leg really bad playing with the kids. Wow. And I was a lot skinnier back then. This is going back. And, uh, and then while I was rehabbing my right leg, I blew out the patellar tendon on oh, my left no. knee. Oh, wow. And, and now, thanks to Jesus Christ, I can walk and train 
although I do limp a little bit, but I don't need a wheelchair, walk, or a cane. And you look great. I, yeah. Thank you C- so can much. Can we announce your age? Yes, sir. Of so course. When, when I, I, now, I've known a rich. I thought, I have to be honest, and don't take this as an insult. No. So I thought Rich was like 75. That's what I thought. When, so when I seen you today, I didn't even know it was you. <laughs> I said, this can't be the same Richard LaFrance. Oh, oh, because I was going to say, Bill, no, but he does not look 75. You know, no, I don't know what you're but talking now, about. But, I, I, but I, he's younger than I thought, but yet he looks great for his age. You're 64? Four, yes, sir. 64? Yeah, no way. Jesus, I offered him 10000 for his hair already. What you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm in on that deal. I'm going to have an auction. We'll do a live auction. Yeah. We'll no, you, you look great. So the book itself, though, what, what's it actually about? Okay, here's the what book it is. Itself? This so, is what I want the people to so, know. So there's a very famous baseball player. The younger people may not remember him. His name is Roberto Clemente. Yeah, of course. And, and he Pirates. Was, and he was one of my favorite players growing up. Even though we had season tickets for the Mets, the Pirates always came in and decimated the Mets <laughs> until 69 when I was nine years old. I got to see the Mets win the World Series. Wow. Shocked Miracle the world. Mets. Yeah. But so he was my favorite player. So God gives me the opening to the story. And it's, it's God talking to Roberto Clemente as his airplane crashes December 31st, 1972. It was a big deal in New York and the Eastern Seaboard. It's a Seaboard. big deal everywhere yeah. in the and, world. And Hispanic. Wasn't he going yeah. to, bring, to, help, to help his people? Yes, he was. That's just a terrible story. I know. Yeah. So He, he was bringing an uh, earthquake aid, aid to right? Nicaragua oh. because the bandidos were stealing everything he sent down they stole. Oh. So he goes to, he says to his friend Tom Walker, his best friend, who is Neil Walker's father, Tom Walker was a teammate, okay. and he says, Tom, I have to go, but you can't go. He doesn't let him go, and he gets on the plane. Wow. The plane crashes, and in fact, we're going to shoot the movie in Puerto Rico. Wow. Jimmy came up with a great idea because we get 40% back on the budget. Okay. So anyway, so that's the opening. God talking to Clemente. He says, I have to take your life today because I'm going to have to need you to do a favor for me many years from now. Plane goes into the ocean and fast forwards to Central Church. Two little boys on the pitching mound speaking to each other. God says, it's been a long time since we've been face to face. Satan says, it's been about 2,000 years since I s- took my sword and, s- and stabbed your son in the side and killed him. And wow. the, of course, Satan goes, you're still holding grudges, stuff like that, because Satan's a bad guy. We know that. Sure. So that's how the opening is. And then they pick 50 of the greatest players of all time, living and deceased, to play at Ebbets Field for the future of mankind. One game. This is a great One premise. Game. I knew you'd like this. It, well, yeah. Like, like fill the dreams issue. Yeah. Oh. I, I actually can't claim credit for it. I give it all to God because that's what people call me and text me and email me and Jimmy too. And they say, Richard, we're not even baseball fans, but the ending of your book makes me feel so good. They like to read the end. Wow. So that's a good sign for the movie. You know? Yeah. So that's a good. And Jimmy wrote a brilliant screenplay, just a brilliant screenplay to go along with the book. Is that your role, Jim? Do you, do you yeah. Screenwriter, yeah. Jimmy's screenwriter. a screenwriter. I played baseball since I was four years Us old. Us too. And, uh, Us too. Up until I trusted a doctor who told me I can get my knee replaced and still play when I was 47. That was 13 years ago, and that's when I stopped playing. I got you. I, I would still be playing now, and I just love the game. And this, this is the greatest all-star game ever. Wow. Could ever be played. Old Timers Day, you could still get it on Amazon and stuff, right? It's right. on Amazon, Is, and also I just got a new publisher. Oh, it's good. It's called TPC Publishing. Okay. Out of, and I can get, I can get you guys uh, all these balls and books because we're actually going to sell these guys. I had them made specially for the movie in the book. Whoop. Look how cool! Is there already a movie deal? Uh, we we have had a lot of oh, offers wow, for that. the screen rights. I have a guy. Do you really? Wow. Yep. Old I'd love stuff. to meet him. A hundred percent. I have the hey, guy for you. If you say it, I believe you because I know I have the you guy. guys are honest. Really? How cool. Well, wow. thank you very much. We'll have these on Wait, eBay. These are ours? We'll have these on eBay. Don't, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those oh, are this is great. <laughs> these. <laughs> yeah, what, what do you think that we get for this, Bill? No. We get? <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> will, will he know that we... All right. No. This is great. Thank How you. Cool. You're welcome. Very and cool. also, that's unlimited. You guys can have as much stuff as you want because you gave us a okay. shot to tell the story. Oh, of no, course. No, what a great premise. Man. Thank you. And I heard something else we're going to do that you're going to like, you guys. We decided to, well, the Lord laid on our heart to do the USA Baseball Storm the Barn Prayer Tour. And the purpose of it is to help unify the country, okay, and, and help kids that are faced with overwhelming stuff on a daily basis that's overwhelming. So we're going to tour and we're going to cast 100 lookalikes for the movies. 
for players, coaches, managers that are in the game because I can't pay 100 guys. Sure. So I'm going to get people to appear like when they line up for the Star Spangled Banner and the players because they don't have any speaking roles. They'll just be in the movie like in center field or right field. Now, hopefully, I get enough money. If I can get to Wahlberg, I can get A-list actors, maybe one or two. Right. That'll make the movie catapult it, you know. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a lookalike tour. We go to 10 cities or more. And uh, stop at the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. My book is there. Wow. And so is the baseball. Wait, 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 hold it. Your book is in? Is yes, in? sir, it is. Unbelievable. Yeah, they, yeah, they asked for it. That's a giant thing. Yeah, they asked for it. And I'm a donor there, as well as to the Negro Leagues Museum, as well I do. So I'm sure. just grateful that I have, I have the resources to do what I do. You know? my, 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 uh, I'll tell you what. Listen, uh, I was going to say my friend Jerry Eisenberg. Do you know who Jerry is, the name? I know the name. Yeah. Oh, he's, oh, he's a writer. He's a writer. Oh, oh yeah. he's not writer. just a writer. He's, he's 90, like. He's, he's going to be 94. I just talked to him the other day. I talked to him once a week, every week. He, you know, he gave the, uh, literally, he was at Muhammad Ali's funeral, gave the eulogy. Mm -hmm. I mean, but he's written for the New York Star, the Newark Star Ledger mm -hmm. for 50 years. And he wrote two books that are incredible. On, on baseball and the Negro League, one one is on. Unbelievable how a lot of those guys early, uh, bef you know, didn't get a chance to to break the the color barrier and how good these players were, you know, back in the you know early 30s, 40s. There was there was teams all around Newark, New Jersey, and you know all around they they traveled also. But um, going back to what I said, isn't it unbelievable to know that even when you're gone, that book will be in the Hall of Fame. I would love yeah. something like that. In other words, um, that's your, that's a lasting well, yeah. something that'll be there forever. And I, I'm not looking for you. you know, I'm not trying to say you're going to go anytime soon. But no, know. hey, you know, <laughs> hey, listen, you're, you're writing this guy off already. Yeah, what are you doing, huh? Billy, you're going to live to Ozzy. The way Berkeley. the world is, yeah. the way the world is now. Who yeah. knows what's going to happen? But yeah. it's interesting that you brought up the Negro Leagues because when uh, I would go home every day after church every sure. week and I'd write down notes every every week. And then started, God started giving me messages every day. So I'd go home and start writing every day. And the notes were like all over my desk. It was insane. And, uh, you know, like Mary would tell me, what are you doing over here? I said, this is the stuff I'm writing down, the players sure. and, and, and the innings. Because it's a, it's a 10 inning game in the, in the book. And it's arguably, in my opinion, but I'm biased. I think it's one of the greatest baseball games ever played that we're going to depict on this motion picture. And... Uh, there's a scene in the movie and the book where just before Satan and God, as the two little boys pick the players, Amazing Grace starts to play and the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Oh, wow. And all the Negro Leaguers come up to the pitcher's mound with Satchel Page. There are seven players that lead them to the mound. And Satchel Page says to God, we heard there was a game here. We didn't want you to forget about us. And wow. God says... All of you can watch the game, but I can't use all of you in the game. So everybody who's not playing is going to sit behind God's dugout. So all the Negro League players that never got to play in the major leagues are going to be sitting behind God's dugout for the whole game. Wow. So that's going to be a great scene in the movie, I believe. Yeah. I right. really do. I, I think it could be iconic. In I'm going to just show you, turn, turn my sure. screen to you guys. These are some, Jerry wrote 14 books, by the way. So wow. Jerry, Jerry wrote on Larry Doby, who was, he was very close to. Larry Doby wrote his last book is on Larry Doby. But he also wrote two other books um, it, uh, on the, gate, the Greatest Game Ever Played, which is a, a great baseball book that, that Jerry wrote. I mean, imagine this guy wrote 14 books. Uh, like I said, and he wrote uh, one called Baseball, Nazis, and Nedics Hot Dogs, which is an old place growing <laughs> Nedix, up. Nedix, Hot Nedix, Hot Dogs, I'm sure. saying it wrong. Yeah, Nedix, Nedix. Growing up Jewish in, 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 in um, Newark. <laughs> so, yeah, Jerry's great, and I, I'm so close to him. We talk every single week. And um, so uh, this, is a, this is a really interesting thing that you brought up, these, these other subjects of, of your book, because I'm going to now mention it to, to Jerry. But... Uh, so, yeah, so that's great, guys. You know you guys can get that on, on Amazon, and you have a new publisher, you said? Or no publisher? Yeah, yes, a new publisher called so TPZ Publishing. Why would you want a new publisher? What do they do? Here's why, because even the publishers that I had, I had to self-publish because of all the pitfalls and swindles there are for, for publishing for a first-time author. Wow. So now a friend of mine who's my executive producer, he's a friend of Jimmy's as well, named David White. He couldn't be here today. But he says, Richard, there's a publisher back in Michigan that I think you should talk to named Terry Ziemba. And uh, Terry just loved it. He goes, hey, let's do it. So he's put out a new edition that's going to be ready almost any day now. And okay. he can start shipping them. Nice. And they're a nice soft cover book. 
All right, the more important thing, why don't we all go to dinner? Oh, right? <laughs> we got a manjare. So we got a man- I, I mean, we got to have know, a nash. I, I, go to, I go out to dinner four or five, uh, more than that, uh, four or five, six times a week, obviously. I go to breakfast, too, by the way. I go out to breakfast. Um, and and uh, so you're welcome to go. I mean, I, and I, we all go to the same places, too. I'm going to tell so, you what has to happen. Yeah. There. Go ahead. What do you got? We got to pull Tony O into this. Okay. So uh, because are, the guy that I said I have the guy to do the it's yeah. his guy. Oh, okay. my dad's money guy. Okay. I think will love this movie. Oh, wow. Wouldn't that be a blessing? And, wouldn't and, that yeah. be and something? His dad is a big baseball fan too. Was really? real close to Tommy Lasorda. Yeah. And uh, oh. you know we're, we're I'm real close to Tony Orlando too. I mean you, you obviously know who he is, right? Oh, and, and sure. Of course, he had his own show for years. Oh, he had his TV show. That's right. And, and he just did his last show here in Nevada at South Point. South Point. We were there, of course. And, and now and we the, go to Uncle Zola, right? It, that's over. I flew to a resort in Atlantic City. And the last show was in Uncletsville. You're right. It was in the Mohegan Sun, which on, we had Tony on last week talking about it. It was unbelievable. Oh, the girls man. came on for his last show. Yeah. And uh, the guy that introduced him to his first show, Cousin Bruce, he was there. They introduced him to his last show. <laughs> uh, 50 years. I don't know. 60 years later. 60. I think it was 64. Years 64 later. years later. Yeah. So uh, I'm big, big, big. And you know what's funny? I met Tony O 20 years before I met John. Really? At, at the airport. At the airport. That's he was, wild. He was so I nice. We're at me. Newark? No. Newark Airport? Right here. Right here in Vegas? Right here. It was wow. the, old, the old McCarran Airport before they renamed it after... <laughs> after um, <laughs> Mr. Reed. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Reed. Mr. Reed, who, 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 by the way, you know what? I, I won't get into it. I won't, yeah. get, I, I won't, I won't get into the money that, that, that a friend of mine had to give him every week uh, back in the 70s for years. But um, oh. anyway, so yeah, I met him at that airport and he was checking in, going through... You know... People don't do this anymore. You know the guy that outside. What, what are Sky they called? Cap. Sky cabs. Yeah, yeah. Get they're the gone Sky now. Cap. They're, oh, they're Pretty gone. Much. Yeah, oh, I didn't even know. That's where I met him. I met really? Him Sky cap thing, wow. and uh, he he would treat me like family then. So um, it was really cool. I remember I called my mom and told him. You know, um, you know I, I told I told my mom and dad both the, the both of them. I said, listen, I just ran to Tony Orlando. It was unbelievable. So really cool. Um, so anyway, let let me tell you guys something. So I have a neighbor. I, I, you guys are going to be here for the whole show. So this is just a food thing. So my neighbor, I take him out to Peter Luger's Steakhouse. I've been there five, six times already at Caesars. Uh, Joe's Stone Crab, which is like one of my favorite places, uh, also at the Forum. And that's at the Forum Shop. The other one's at Caesars, real close by. I took him to Carmine's one night. Um, Carmine's at the Forum Shop? Which, by the way, I, I like love. Carmine's at the Forum Shops here. It's so good. The one in Atlantic City is terrible. But I've been there twice. Here, it's too. amazing. Here is amazing, it's I thought. Good. Really great. Mm-hmm. Family style. Family yeah. style. The pictures. I love the, it there. They, they had the Christmas lights up year-round. Um, <laughs> Michael's was the ultimate, though. I took uh, him to Michael's twice. I got comps uh-huh. twice for Michael's. Took him to Michael's. The other night, he says to me, and I like the guy because he's he's a good. He's actually a good guy. Yeah. And I could say this about him, and you know, he's not going to get too, too sore. Might get a little sore. So he says to me, hey. Um, why don't you come over to the house one night and come over to eat? And I said, yeah, sure. He goes, listen, I, I, I like, I do breakfast once in a while at dinner. I said, okay. He goes, you want to come over and get cream of wheat with me? Want to come over for cream of wheat? I said, cream of wheat? Michael's? Stone crabs? Peter Luger? Cream of fucking wheat? That's what, he goes, no, I'm just telling you, I, I, I we do that once. I said, listen. You can invite me over when you're having a barbecue or something. I'm not doing cream. Right. I want real food. No, I just like like these. Yeah. Come get some oatmeal. I, I'm no? just saying like 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 this just happened. So I was like, I gotta mention this on air. But anyway, we'll go to one of those great places for dinner. That'd be fabulous, um, Bill. Do you guys like Italian American Club too? You've been there uh, a million times. I'm a lifetime member since 1981. There. Are you really? As soon as I came to town, my mom was back in New York. Right. And she says you got to go right down there and sign up. Let me and tell I you. Did. I, I love the whole atmosphere there. You know, I didn't go there, though, until I did the show Action on Showtime. And I was filming the show over at Paris, at a lounge at Paris, where my buddy Cookie Jar was the entertainer. And the crumbs. Were the, the crumbs, crumbs there? No, no <laughs> crumbs. You know, you know Cookie Jar and the crumbs. This guy's 40 been years. around. 40 years. So Cookie Jar was, was – I, I, pu- I pulled him on the show with me. He's on Action <laughs> with me. And this guy, Jimmy, comes up to me. Jimmy and Lou. Come up to me and say, "Hey, Bill, how you doing? Nice to nice to see you. You know, um, you know, we follow some things you're doing. You're a pretty sharp guy. These guys own one owns Italian American, Jimmy Gerard. He Jimmy owns Gerard. Italian American, and Lou, with his partner Mike, owned uh, Tuscany on on the uh, what's the Eastern. 
mm. which I love. Yeah. I love that. We've been there. Oh, we, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We've been there scampi. With, we've scampi been scampi appetizer. I'll tell you what. I'll put the scampi appetizer up against anyone's scampi. And he always sends it over, too. Does he really? And I'll just say, listen, I'm sorry to do this. I know you're going to send one of the practice ones over. I, I need a whole meal of these. You know? yeah. no. One I of mean, the practice I mean, ones. Yeah. The practice plate. You get that at Michael's, too. You get the relish tray. Yeah. It's like the practice yeah, plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. But, um, yeah, so we'll... we'll uh, I'm we'll, going to give you an advanced move for the scampi. You ready? Okay, good. You t- he has the scampi and the heavy cream. And he's got the scampi and the olive oil and garlic. That's the one I like. I like both of them, but the olive oil and garlic I like. You mix it. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and then, then you, with the bread? And then the garlic bread. You dip it in there. Sure. Oh, go right to the, forget right about right it. Right. Molto bene, molto bene. Right to the nursing home from there. Yeah, um, yeah no, that's, that's uh, good stuff. Um, but, yeah, so, all right, so you guys know. I, I want you guys to stick around. I, I've got a couple subjects yeah. to go over. Where is I'm gonna, sports betting hit, is your... Bread and butter also. Absolutely it is. I'm so glad that you were with me for Otani. The oh. Otani 30 to 1. I gave Wait, what, 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 uh, what's the well, deal on that? You remember a couple of years ago oh, I, when gave, you had out, I gave out Otani yeah. for MVP yeah. a couple of years ago, and I gave it a out. A year ahead of time. A year ahead. A year ahead of time. A year ahead of time. I bet that. At, <laughs> I bet it at 33 to 1, and they took $30 where I bet it. That was the max to win 1000 <laughs> Who do you they, have this year? They let me do it 30 times, though. Really? Before they moved it down to thirty to one, so mm-hmm. I actually won a lot of money on it. Yeah, I won mm-hmm. a lot of money. The line on, on Mookie is probably ridiculous, right? He's oh, Mookie Betts is probably the favorite. This you know year, what? Right? We could look. I could check out some odds here when we're online. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, what do you guys think about? What do both of you guys think about the Oakland A's coming to town? Or eventually. Hey, I, I'm a baseball fan. They so may want to use that jersey. Yeah. They oh, may yeah. want to use that jersey. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. What do you guys are you, you guys are are happy or, or sad? I, or? I'm very happy because I'm happy too. You know, I think yeah. me and you are the only ones. Maybe John. I'm happy. Are you? I don't. Yeah, well, I, don't I got know. a lot of negative feedback on other things. Like, oh, people don't want the A's. The, the, I don't know why. Well, movie. it's I don't know why people can't do the, the math bad. I know and that. and realize like people keep saying, oh, we don't want the shitty A's. They're not going to be shitty when they're here. How does mm-hmm. everyone not figure this out? They're going to sell out every game. Promise. I, I promise. Th- you know, I. I said that on a show. They'll sell out every and game. And people said to me, are you crazy? They're not selling out. Of course they so will. People they plan will. their vacations around coming right. coming here for Raiders games. They won't sell it out. Oh, the, the Cubs the will. Golden the Golden Knights will, The right. Phillies. Right. The Rangers. The people Yankees. People plan their vacations right. around that. You got you to come to, from, you know, from, I almost said Shea Stadium. You almost come from <laughs> City Field. Come over yeah. here and you can watch, uh, yeah. you know, the Yankees or Mets play right. in Vegas. Right. Three games. Right. It's unbelievable. So they may feel in like the, the air vi- conditioning in the air in the conditioning. air conditioning. So they may feel like the visiting team a lot, yeah. just like the Raiders do sometimes when the Chiefs come here. Forget it. It's it's a cheat. You're at a Chiefs game when the yeah. Raiders come yeah. here. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know. Um, I knew that Eagle, year. Eagles too. Yeah, yeah. Eagles, yeah. Eagles, but, Steelers. You know, but I also think sixty percent Steelers fans. Ownership. Fans you know, they keep shitting on the owner. They'll sp- he'll spend the money now. He can't spend so. the money so. in Oakland. You're never mm-hmm. going to make it back. They get. Our minor league team here, the A's AAA team, right, the Aviators, they do 10,000, 11,000 people a game. Oakland gets 3,000, 4,000, yeah. 5,000. If they're lucky, if they're lucky. Year, yeah. If they're lucky, they were, if they're lucky. There was like Plus, it's a bad area, too, to go minor into. League teams. It's a downgrade yeah. when you get called up yeah. from oh, from man. here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Stadium-wise. So, I'm, I'm, I hope they get – I don't want an NBA team. I don't want an NBA team. I've well, seen some things. Too, though. I know it's probably going to come, but yeah. I've seen some things that happened here in the past during the All Star game and stuff. Everyone walking out of restaurants and yeah. flipping tables. Yeah. But I, but the baseball crowd's a cool crowd. You know, uh, take the me basketball out the crowd game. will be fine. It's All Star crowd that's no good. The All Star All, crowd All Star good. just is you always have a point. crazy. You have a point. All Star week is always crazy. Now, now, in, so in let me ask city. you. Do you, you so you guys so you're with me on Tony. That's great to know. Do you bet sports? No. You could be my next beard. Okay. You could beard him. Yeah, I just got yeah. thrown out of Caesars. Oh, um, man. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying William to figure Hill? out. My wife works. William Hill. They threw me out. Yeah. William uh, Hill? Yeah. William Hill? Yeah. For, for using my brain. Um, mm. You can't use your brain. You got to be Joe Well, Paul. you are as long as you lose. Yeah, you're fine as long as you lose. Yeah. And, and you know what? They were pretty good to me for a long, long time. But, um, you know. You're allowed in the, I, on I made the property, just yeah, not yeah, in the sports. Yeah, of course. I'm a seven-star card. It doesn't even matter. Seven-star card, big credit lines of properties. They don't. They, no, they, you can't talk. No one wants to make a decision. No one wants to talk. That's every level of casino business, all right. sorts of forms, uh, not just the sports book. You ask someone that's a casino host or someone that's in marketing or someone, they, everyone's scared to death. They don't want to be quoted. They want. They don't want to. They want nothing to ruin their paycheck that they're stealing. Um, you know. How did they tell you, Bill? Like, did they tell you in person or a letter? Or how did they tell you? I, I made a bet that that was a public bet that was on Twitter that someone uh, sent me, and. Um, I, I made it. I made it for a thousand dollars a bet, and uh, it won. 
and they said that uh, that was all over, and I was taking advantage of a situation that they didn't know about. And but isn't that the purpose? Isn't the purpose of betting <laughs> like if your quarter like stations drew me out because I bet a I bet a quarterback that was out. Right. I bet the other team that and I got it five minutes before the team they got it. So I bet my average bet on. I didn't take advantage and bet a triple bet or five times bet. And they said, hey, we want that ticket back. A rush is thrown out of all our properties. Wow. You know, you're not allowed to play the ticket. Wow. The, the game moved two and a half points, by the way. I got the better news. Game lost. I oh. lost. I lost anyway. I lost. Wow. Yeah, I lost. But when I lose, didn't matter. They just wanted the ticket back or else I wasn't allowed to, to play. Wow. And that, that happened to Alan Boston, too, over at Red Rock. He bet wow. something at like 90 to 1. That should have been 35 to 1. And they came running out in the parking lot and said, we need your ticket back or I should not allow to bet with us no more. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah. Super sharp. Yeah. He's another super sharp guy, Boston. He had a great basketball season. Oh, He's man. been on our show multiple times. You bet on all sports? Uh, pretty much. Uh, sometimes I'll take a break off for travel because I like to travel and go to Europe and stuff. So sometimes uh, I haven't gone since the pandemic yep. because the world's a little bit crazy now. I wanted to let it <laughs> Absolutely. Calm, calm I think down. you're correct for doing that. Yeah. So, but, uh, so when I travel, I don't really too. bet. If I go overseas, I won't just, I mean, like unless a friend Rick calls me or something yeah. or now Billy calls me and says, hey, put this in. You know what I mean? Something right. like that. Then I'll do it. But if I'm away on vacation... I, I kind of take a break for three, four weeks. Your so bread and butter, though, is baseball uh, betting? Or? Baseball, yeah. And also, I do well on college hoops, too. But okay. I don't produce as many plays as Billy or, or like Boston or some of these guys uh, or Rick. They've got a lot more plays. 10, I 20 kinda, plays a day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. During the heart of the I season. Mean, and RAS Sports, who had a really bad year this year. Had a bad I, year. I this had year. a bad year, RAS. Yep. And, uh, I By know the way, we, 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 we didn't lose, but we struggled too this year. It was hard I'm used to winning 50, 60, 70 units in college basketball. Meanwhile, Ooh. college football was unbelievable. Preseason football, NFL, unbelievable. And yeah. the NFL season was great. I have no complaints. Yeah. I how, had a how can tournament. I complain? Yeah. I'm, I'm just so mm. grateful to, to the Lord. Something else I wanted to tell you guys that I thought of after the fact. For the movie, we came up with the idea to shoot two alternate endings. So no one really knows. Everyone's going to know how the book ends. But no one's going to know how the movie ends until we put it in post-production. Okay. So what I want the sports books here to do is for informational purposes only, if I can get Mike gone or some of these guys yeah. to put up a betting line on the board, God versus Satan. Wow. And, and God is $1. forty. Right. And it's nine is the total. Oh, wow. And it's $1. forty. Nolan Ryan against Walter Johnson. So hopefully as we gear up for the movie, if we could get some – betting talk about it or see guys like like Vicaro. Right. I've known that guy forever. Yep. I'm going to say, Jimmy, put up, just for informational, put up a line to kind of, because that'll be picked up by the press, you know? Like yeah, the win sure. used so, to do. The win used to yeah, do Yeah, that that's right. For things. the Oscars. Remember the Oscars? The Oscars. Yeah. yeah. Johnny Avello. Johnny yep. Avello used to yep. do it. They still do, don't they? Or uh, no? No, he's, he's at DraftKings now, so no. Oh. Um, but they don't. Um, but I love the win, though. I love the guy, oh. that, the, the guy that runs the win sports book there, Doug. They're very good to me. Excellent sports book. They, you know, they, they agreed to take a certain amount from me, and that's it. And he goes, I want to take it, and I want to overmove your stuff when you bet. So they know, they know how to book. Um, you know, it, it's funny you say you said Walter Johnson. Why? Is he on the devil team? He's a starter for Satan. Nolan Ryan that. starts for God's team. Yeah. Why'd you figure that? No, I just had a feeling <laughs> that there's a couple of players. Who was the guy that used to go head? Oh, my God. How can I not notice being a big baseball fan? He used to go feet first into your head with the spikes. Back Spike, in Cobb, Cobb, Cobb. How can I not know? How can I forget Ty Cobb? <laughs> the He's got He's the leadoff the, hitter. He's the leadoff. He's the leadoff yeah. hitter. That and leadoff on the Satan team. No. Now, it's very important that we tell Pete Rose <clears throat> yeah. that he's on God's team and so is Joe Jackson. Oh, okay. wow. Both guys got picked by God, which people say, why is that? I he said, got picked hey, by God. And Joe Jackson should get picked by he God. He should get picked by God. Yeah, Absolutely. Look, look what he batted in that, in that World Series and stuff, and they said he was you know, taking the payoffs. He, right. didn't, he, he didn't make an error either. Right, yeah. didn't make an error. Right. Right. There you go. Um, and that's, a, that's a, the, it was it Eight Men Out? Is that the movie? Eight yeah. Men Out. Eight, yes, yeah. Eight Men Out. Great, great movie. Great movie. Um, Arnold, Arnold Rusty. Arnold yes. Rusty. He's in the crowd during the game. We're going to have like we're, oh, John God. Dillinger, wow. Al Capone. So we're going to have like celebrities identified. Oh, wow. But this here's is what such I want to do. a good premise. Unbelievable. Yeah. How about the people in the audience here? Yeah. yeah. Dillinger, where, you know, yeah. where are you robbing banks? <laughs> where the money is. <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah. I said, why would you want to rob a bank? Because that's yeah. where the money is. And, uh, let me ask you: um, If I lose like five, ten pounds, I could I could play Babe Ruth. Well, well sure, but okay, good. But I mean, I watch like this. That, that's if we don't use Vogelback. But I got something oh, okay. better for you. Sorry. All my family and friends are going to be behind God's dugout. So anybody, and it, I'm it, in because because it's Trip so it's so Rico. wonderful that 
you know, I'm able to do this. So we can put people, and Jimmy came up with the great idea. We're going to have Clayton Kershaw do stuff for the handicapped kids behind home nice. play. So we're going to do a lot of nice. stuff because that's what wow, I like to do. Look at these ideas you guys come up with. Oh, it's all God, man. Oh, Without wow. God, I can't do it. That's with great. God, I can do anything. Does God tell you anything about what's going on in baseball today? Or yeah, you got any winners? <laughs> I'm just saying. He I'm doesn't not, get, not, let's but, get some but winners. Not, or does but he not, not gamble? Watch this. I'm just, I'm not he doesn't trying. gamble, Bill. I used gamble. to have a friend of mine. He's departed. His name is Mike Addy. Mike Adio. He, he picks horses. He used to say, Rich, sometimes it's a favorite. Sometimes it's, it's a price. He goes, but he goes, I don't make the prices. He says, I pick the winners, and God makes the price. <laughs> wow. My dad, my dad used to tell me that what John just said. It's funny you said that. God doesn't gamble. God doesn't gamble. My dad used to he say, stays out Bill, of it. We don't, you, you, don't, you don't pray to God to win money or anything like that. That's pretty funny you said that. I just mm. brought back that. Uh, uh, all right, guys, let me, get, let me get to my next subject. This okay, is go ahead. So a buddy of mine sends me this text. Bill, I want to let you know the story of what happened to me a few days ago. You know when I when, you know when I love a game and fire away a game, win or lose, it was my game to play. Yes, this guy, by the way, stone cold sucker, was lost, loses about a hundred thousand a year. He's lucky enough, luckily enough, his family owns apartment buildings in the city. He's very wealthy, but I lose a hundred thousand a year betting sports. Won't listen to me. Nothing. He wants nothing to do with that. Mm. He wants his own opinion, and he can afford to do it. So. So he said, remember when the – okay, I, I'm not going to mention the game. But he said, I loved eight games this week so much that I wanted to bet a six-point teaser for $200, 15 to 1. I went to the window, and the ticket didn't print out. The manager or shift supervisor came over, looked at the ticket, and said, you have a player's card? I kindly gave it to the supervisor. The person looked at a computer at a desk for a minute, walked back over to me and said, you play horses. Now you're betting sports? I said, yeah, I, I play both, though. I bet sports, too. He goes, no, I'm not, you can't have a $200 teaser. I can give you a $50 teaser. They gave him a $50 teaser. He said no and walked away. Of course, the very first game on the ticket lost, he said. <laughs> I just cannot understand why they wouldn't take it. And he goes, I, I go to Westgate and make bets like this. They never never refuse me. So I, I'd like to throw them under the bus. Um, <laughs> that's it. They're Coast Casinos, which are Boyd Coast. They sweat the money so bad. It's crazy. They sweat the money so bad. Um, of course, they threw me off the app right away when I hit something like eight to one. They threw me off. Uh, they should have a sign outside losersonly.com and just mm -hmm. rename, rename the whole casino. Now, it's a gambling joint, though. I'll just tell you. I'm talking about the, the, the sports book sweats. It's a gambling joint. I say good and bad about everything. I look right at the camera and say this because I actually like the Gold Coast. I, I like, I mean, except for the smoke. Smoke's bad. bad. Local, but ping local pong, casinos ping are ping bad. Pong. Yeah. Ping, ping pong, 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 pong is where I'm going. <laughs> See, this guy. <laughs> hey, what's that? Not, how can we not have been together? I love Ping Pang Pong. I think what it's is one that? of the best, the best orange chicken in town. It's the, the best, best orange Chinese chicken in restaurant town. in town. Really? Yeah. It's at the Gold Coast. Phenomenal. At the Gold Coast. Yeah. It's at the Gold Coast. Great, great Chinese place. Uh, the owner of that one also owns the one at the Venetian, too, next to the sports book at the Venetian. So, But the Gold Coast is a gambling joint. You go in, all the tables are packed. People are gambling. They'll, you know, they'll, they'll take some bets. Have, it's a gambling joint is what yeah. I'm trying to say. Like Michael's. Like my, uh, Michael's place. South Point. South Point. Yeah. That's a gambling joint. You go yeah. there on a Tuesday. Come on, on a Wednesday. Tonight's the slowest <laughs> night of the week historically in gaming. Tuesday, Wednesday nights. It'll be packed. Packed. The every buffet night. out of control. Unbelievable. Yeah. The place is just always, they're gambling joints. But yeah. As far as these guys that are stealing money in the sports book by by, by getting paychecks, I, I wish like Bill Boyd and the chairman and the guys that knew know how much money they're costing them they're they're being costed by upper management and management in general because what happens is they just throw squares out. They throw this guy's a regular guy he loses a hundred plus a year betting sports. He'll never come on your property again because you guys wouldn't take a $200 sucker bet teaser. Shame on you. Shame on you guys. Anyway, I know. I go off. It is it's crazy. Okay, Bill. You're right. You're I mean, 100% right. $200 teaser. Yeah. I, wouldn't take. I mean, you're, you're a casino or you're not. You're yeah. a sports book or you're not. You yeah. take action or you don't. I mean, it's, it's they binary. Want, they want people it, to come up and bet those type of bets normally. That's right. a sucker bet. Teasers and parlays. If you're <laughs> sweating teasers and parlays, what oh. are we doing? Like, if you're worried about those hitting, like, what are we no. doing? They're, they're, right? They're, That's the whole point. It's a shame. And they're not alone. I don't mean to pick on them. There's other places in town. Right. Uh, there's the Treasure Islands. There's, a, there's, you know, there's other places now. Um, that 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 sweat the money and 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 you know there's there is there's even more than that. I mean, you go to around 
different properties. They act like it's coming out of their pro- out of their pocket, mm-hmm. and uh, that bothers me. It yeah. bothers me because what what these guys don't know, even like the heads of some of these bigger companies that are nationwide now. They don't realize the risk departments are costing them money. Not all risk departments, but the risk departments cost them money because on their shift, they don't want to have a guy win anything. Uh, right. Laying 11 to 10, the money's posted up. They're, they're betting sucker bets. But a guy comes in and wants about 5000 on a couple of things, a $2,000 parlay, $3,000 parlay, and, and they lose 100000 on their shift. Just so happens they lose on that shift. Right, it's not no, a big deal. It doesn't matter because they make a million on the next shift. Right. Especially these bigger companies I'm talking about yeah. that came to the country the last, you know, since, since PASPA was re- re- repealed. So um, what I'm saying is that they don't know. They're sitting up in their purchase. They don't even realize that this goes on in their in their risk departments. And they're throwing out squares. Listen, hmm. I'm not even saying me. I'm, this, is, this is not about me. I understand why... You would reduce me. Not why you'd throw me out, by the way. With why you re- re- would reduce me. I lay three. A line's going to close five. I understand. But Joe Public, like my neighbor, that every year he's lost millions of dollars gambling. You're throwing, and now you have you have actually alienated him from your bottom line. But guess what? Because the supervisor didn't take the bet. The guy in risk didn't. didn't the, the main guys probably don't even know about right. what happened here. Because if the main guy knew, they would be like, what are we doing? I, you know, let me tell you something, too. I would never hire anyone in any facet of the gaming industry that didn't gamble. I want them to know what it is to lose a paycheck. I want them to know what it is to have the pressure of having money and going broke and stuff. Because let me tell you something else. That's something that uh, my old knock-around friends back east, I have a wacko friend that's that, you know, in, in, in the city. It just He says, I love when I go broke. The pressure's off. I don't know, I can go to sleep now. Oh my god. I can go to sleep now. Every day I'm in action. When I have money, the pressure's right. off. Okay, well, That's so funny. I want I want these people to know. I want these people to know. And and only guys were like maybe a valid thing. I mean, you know what I mean. No. No. I, I you know you guys know what I mean. No, when you gamble every day and and it just um it, it just it, it's something that's in our human makeup, our you know the human makeup and stuff. We we have that thing where we, we just chase, especially where we're from. Where were you originally from? What part of New York? Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn. Okay, so, so you got Bronx, Brooklyn. Uh, where are you from? Tom's River. Tom's River. Yeah, I, I'll count that. That's a game. Let me tell you something. All those Jersey East Coast towns, they're all gambling. Oh, I grew man. up in a little boardwalk down there, Kingsburg. I grew up in Seaside. Yeah, on we the were all, we were all gamblers. My dad had sixty uh, wheels stands. Stands. I worked yeah, in those stands when I was a kid. I worked at a basketball stand when I was a kid on the Kingsburg boardwalk. The, hoops <laughs> the hoop was a little smaller. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't regulation. But my, my bosses would get mad because I, I would give away. I, I gotta tell you something. Though. I come from two old. I, I, I come from two old fashioned parents though, and, and like my father was very giving. Give the shirt off his back, and I would always feel bad. I would give so much merchandise away. The boss would say, "Like, like what happened here? You know, I, I would give stuff away. Like, come on, your rims aren't even big enough. You know, the the trick was throwing it backwards, spinning it. You know, spinning it, spinning it in. But uh, I worked at a dart stand. You yeah. had to kill Qaddafi. Qaddafi yeah. was the center back then. He was the leader. No of, way. Yeah. Qaddafi was the leader of what country? Uh, Libya. Uh, Libya. Libya. Yeah, real nice guy. Uh, they, they, <laughs> parade, they paraded him through the streets in the end. They were his body. They, they so that's him. right. Giving no prizes out. Do you remember cover the red spot with the five plates? Oh, yeah. Yeah. My dad the disc. That to with the disc. Yeah. Wow. And well, your dad was a real huckster. Well, he yeah. brought the bongs there, too. Yeah. The okay. Bongs. Wow. <laughs> I worked at, you know, you remember remember Kill the Cats? Oh, yeah. The cats that had the furry thing? Hey, no. So it looks like a nice, it Easy looks like a nice target. furry cat. <laughs> in the, middle, the middle of us, the, the center of the cat's this big, and the fur is this big. But... You would get a good baseball pitcher, though. They'd knock yeah. the cats over every time. But I worked at all those stands, and and that's how I learned my interaction with people. I first started at my aunt and uncle's pizza place on the boardwalk, and um, at nine years old, cutting pizzas for 50 cents an hour. True story. Yeah. Villa Pizza. Still still there, 55 years later. Wow. Pizza V, still on Kingsburg Boardwalk. I don't want to tell cousin you what Anthony. the cost of pizza, a slice of pizza is now. Yeah, no. I, I, $7 yeah, a slice. No, I know what it is. $7. <laughs> I, I went to one of the food courts here just the other day. Okay, at the Venetian, at the Venetian, <laughs> I can't believe what's going on. I wanted to take a video. I really don't want to blast them because I don't mm-hmm. know the. There's a place called the Totonos out of New York, or whatever it is. How much do you think a slice of pepperoni pizza was? Twenty bucks. Thirteen bucks. Thirteen dollars for a slice of pizza. I, I just can't believe that. For yeah. bread, the whole pie. For bread and sauce. Do you sauce? know what it costs for for a pie to be made? Even today, I don't know. Five bucks. Yeah, maybe, maybe less. less. Maybe, maybe less. less. Maybe less. Because you're buying bulk pizza at Sam's Clubs. 
four toppings of meat for eight ninety five. Wow. A whole you, you, mu you must be friends with my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. Sorry. No, when you, uh, when I'm you joking. I'm joking. On, the East on a Coast, serious so. note, though, does Sam's Club, like Sam's Club and, and, and Costco? Yeah. They have some really good, unique finds. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, my wife finds these things that like and, and are really decent, really good. Stuff that's yep. made. They have their own bakeries. They bake it in-house, too. So yeah. um, they make their sandwiches in-house. Um, you know what I can't find in this town? Maybe you guys can help me. He says, oh, my, my life's so bad. <laughs> Food all the time. Any good hot dogs in town? Oh. They serve some Michael at Sam's Club. Oh, then you're right. That's what made me. Yeah. That's what made me think about that. The the, the, the Sabrettes at, at Sam's Club. At, at Sam's Club. Minnesota, I mean. Minnesota, dollar fifty. No, you're right. That's what made me think of hot dogs, though. South like Point. Good. Oh, the hot beer. dog part at South Point. It's South okay, Blair. but I that's want good. it. I want it grilled. Yeah, I like a grilled dog. Oh, there's some, like yeah, some places see. back east. There's some places back east, like uh, there's a place called Rutt's Hut up by the Meadowlands that makes a good, but I like a grilled dog. Yeah. I'll give you some. I'll give you the best grilled dog out there. You're going to know it. Come on, you don't know right away? Windmill. The oh, okay. windmill back east, back, yeah. at, back at the boardwalks. The, 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 Sawmill, the, the, you mean? No, the win windmill. Windmill hot dogs and Max's in Long Branch and, oh, and okay. up and down the east, okay. up in that Seabright. Windmill hot dogs are grilled. Have you had a Dodger dog? Thick cased hot dog. I did. The grilled Dodger dog. Yeah, Nobody's had, beating that. I actually have I'm had sorry. Some, yeah. Everything's Dodgers. Yeah. It is. Every well, let's talk about Dodger baseball dog, real quick. Dodger dogs. You're a baseball guy. Yes, sir. Try to be. I try to be. There's four teams I want you to watch for okay. future bets. I don't know if you're a future bet World Series guy. I'm the guy Sometimes that had the Ra I will. Rangers last year, 60 to 1. I have. He did have the Rangers. Wow. He said it on the podcast. No, he That's did awesome, times. man. He did, he did have the Rangers last year. That's awesome. Man. Listen to me. Uh, you, I mean, listen, you play 33 teams, you should get uh, <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me. All right, tell me. If they don't get hurt, the Dodgers are going to run, oh. run away with it. That's a fact. Wow. But you never know. Some injuries, whatever. Okay. Watch out for the Cincinnati Reds, okay. either this year or next year. This is what I said about the Rangers for the last two years, and it took I was wrong the first year I said it, but I did say maybe next year. Watch out for the Reds. Watch out for the Kansas City Royals wow. at 100 to 1 this wow. year. Wow. Watch out and remember I said it. John's looking to bury They also every just day. beat the Astros last night. Did they? Hey, I'll put Street some cred. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they did. They came back. They were down 3 nothing in that game. Yep, they went 5-4 in the next Billy, we got lucky on the first five innings. Remember, we tied it up 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, five oh. innings. We tied okay. it down 3 nothing in the bottom of fifth. And then I'm going to tell you. Oh, oh my game. You your game was oh, the yeah, Royals yeah, yeah. first five. Yes. And we pushed. Yes. We pushed. So yes. in the National League, you got Dodgers and Reds. American League, I just said Royals. And then... If you guys are not pounding the former champs, the defending champs at 15 to 1, it is so disrespectful that the Rangers are 15 to 1. They were more than You've that. I got believe to it. be, I or it might be 18. To we one. might be able to get more. I was thinking you got to be thing. kidding me. I was thinking get more than that. Wow. You got to be kidding me. not giving them any credit me. at all. Maybe because of the change in managers. We were talking I don't know, but about I can, the change. I promise you this will age well. It will not be the Yankees in the World Series. Oh, there you go. That's I'm not a Yankee guy. I'm a Mets happen. guy. So Billy knows they're, that. They're we had season the Mets it's on fun. paper are scary every year, and I just don't understand what's going on. That they just can't materialize. Probably, what is going on? Like, I want them to get there. Probably make a See, decent size. Maybe it's the strawberry the curse. They must have the worst <laughs> pitching coaches. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. The, Phil says now he's going to make a decent size bet on the Yankees because I just counted them completely <laughs> out. 11 to 1. The Yanks are 11 to 1. Not happening. That's promise. That's good odds, actually. 11 to 1. Can't beat the Rangers. It's not What's Texas? Rangers are twelve to one. This is circa. Oh, they came down a little. Royals one hundred and twenty to one. That's Whoa, a winner. I like that. I'm yeah. telling you. I'm, I'm gonna ride. Get with on the Royals next. train. I'm, I'm gonna get on that. It's a good young team. Oh, Reds, oh, boy. Are, Reds are fifty. Uh, fifty to one. Reds this year and yeah. Royals this year and then next year too. Same thing. Next year, they back may need to back. Year. But yeah, okay. I would. I would. They're gonna be there, man. Uh, they got a good team. Boy. We have a center fielder that plays for USD named Dustin Allen. Yeah. Who's a, a guy that works with me and for me, really? his son, and the, the Royals are looking at him. He's super fast. He's batting about 300 now, senior year center of college. Fielder. Dustin Allen, center fielder for the USD Toreros. Home run power, too? Or? Home run power. Wow. He's got fast, it all. Bats second. Bats lefty. Oh. A and he also can pitch, but he hasn't been pursuing the pitching. But, he, but he's a left-handed pitcher. Really? Really nice player. Dustin Allen for okay. USD. Let's see if the Royals get him. We'll see, but yeah. he's well. I may have tell. I'm friends with the owner of the Rangers. I may have to tell. I we may have. Huh? To, I might have to sway that the other way. Dustin Allen, on, uh, 
top 10 highlights twice. Really? For ESPN, yeah, ESPN. On ESPN. ESPN. Number one once. Throws oh, lefty wow. also? What's that? He throws lefty. Pitches lefty. Pitches lefty. Yeah, lefty. Wow. Yeah. And lefty yeah. stick. Yeah, a nice, nice batter. Just a yeah. nice, nice, nice player. Wow. I mean, I can't say enough good about him. And he's a nice kid, too. That's exciting. I have to plug him. Yeah, yeah, him. no. He's a good kid. I last like last subject for me, last rant. I don't mean to be so negative. No, I like no, when you you're are. Not better. Better. That's better you. You're, you're, you're George you. likes when you're here, here, George back there loves well, when you're negative. Here's the thing, you know. The best uh, line was you saying that you should play Babe Ruth. I think we've <laughs> oh. got to make this happen. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. By, by the way, I'm a giant historian of baseball. I love, I, I absolutely love uh, specials on Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig. Oh, I, went, I went to their grave recently and uh, really? sent pictures. Uh, Babe Ruth. He loves going to cemeteries. Right by Billy Martin. They're buried. And I went to Lou Gehrig's. And who else? There was one other person there. Oh, there was four of them that I really was enjoyed. And I put them up there. I, I like going to cemeteries. I think it's it's cool going to see famous graves. And um, I talked about Westwood Cemetery a couple times in, in, in L.A. And uh, Pierce Brothers, there's so many. I mean, Dean Martin, uh, uh, oh. you know, uh, Marilyn Monroe. I mean, go on. And They're on at Westwood, on. right? They're at Westwood. Yeah. Oh. Roddy Dangerfield on, on his stone. Oh. It says, "There goes the neighborhood." That's it. Oh. Roddy Dangerfield. That's there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Mike, my, um, Kirk Douglas was just was buried there just recently. And wow. And uh, where yeah. is it? It's right in the middle of like like the city. And you'll, you'll you can't even catch it. It's ten minutes from. From Santa in Monica, Westwood. yeah, it's on a, off Wilshire. It's on a, or it's on, it's, I think it's on Wilshire. The main, hot, like this big tall building is right behind it. Okay, it's like still there. It's, it's obviously still there, still there. Like, yeah, yeah, like sure. they like they took everyone out. Right, right. But um, there's some great, great videos I've seen of of Joe DiMaggio there, um, many times visiting Maryland. He sent wow. roses every single week to her to her stone. You know, they were getting people don't notice they were getting remarried. They were actually getting remarried uh, a couple weeks before she died. Wow. So, I did know that. I did not yeah, know that. Yeah, right before the Kennedys killed her. Um, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Right, what what was it. your last rant? Uh, I just feel bad, but I'm not. No, go to, ahead. Okay. Let's. let's... Uh, and you know why I do this? I do this so Joe Public knows what's going on. Yeah. I, I want to wrap this up with I, you angry. I am Joe Public. <laughs> I'm stick up for. I, I mean, I stick up because I am that regular guy. Like, right. I, I, you know, you're the man of the people. Well, you're I the try people's to be. So spokesperson. I try, to, I try to help them, even if they if they DM me or something or text me on Twitter. Hey, can you follow me? I have some. I'll go. I'll help them go after the sports book. You're I'm, the blue collar ambassador. Not, trust me, I'm not saying I'm a bargain all around. But, all right. Um, you're but, a gentleman, Bill. You're a gentleman. <clears throat> how much money? Does a sports book, does it does a sports book teller cost a company sometimes? So in other words, in Atlantic City actually, you go to like the Tropicana, they they must they must be pulling them out of the underneath the boardwalk. They're so bad. <laughs> no, they're, they're some of the, like I, I'll go up and ask for a bet and it's like, yeah, man, what? What, what do you want? Like they're so bad. I have, really? I have I have photos of these guys I took. They're so bad, so I'm ready to blast them. <laughs> really? But uh it happened yesterday here in town. Okay. You're gonna say the place or no? It happened you know what? It, this happens, I'm sure, at many sports Save books. Save the place. Um, Save the place. It, I was really at a bucket of blood, and 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 I was at a place like a, a one of these places on, on the Bo- strip, Boulder Highway. Okay, Boulder. Don't Highway. ask me what I'm doing over there. Yeah, as you say, well, you <laughs> yeah. get what you pay for, Bill. Yeah, what are you no, doing? No, no. You know? um, yeah. Yeah. I was on Boulder Highway, and there's one of the companies there, and uh, a buddy of mine came with me. Um, the cream of wheat guy. He came with me, <laughs> and and I, I wanted him to I have I go put a bet in. And uh, he went up there, and I said, here, this is what you want to put in. This is really a good bet to make. Um, and, and I showed him. I, I wrote down a piece of paper exactly what he should make because he's not familiar with too many sports betting terms. Yeah. So this is a really good bet. I said, you always want to gamble with me? I said, here, you know, bet what you want. You yeah. Know what I mean? Bet what you want on this. He goes up to the counter, and the guy takes the thing. He's like, yeah, we don't, we don't have this, man, and throws it back to him. And I'm like, what do you mean they don't have it? So now I got to... Now I actually get the bet number and show them that they have it. And the guy gets pissed off at the counter. I'm watching him, too. And I'm, I'm you know, like, like my yeah. old mother's. I, 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 I'm watching him, what he's doing. And the guy is just a miserable person. A, you know, mm-hmm. literally misplaced rage, mad at his own life, jealous yeah. of anyone else that bets. And, like, he was mad to find. And, of course, they had that they had it, and we bet it. But I just thought about it, though. How much money does your... Um, right. Front end people that are have interaction with the public can cost your company. Yeah. If that's a newbie and and um, listen, I understand you're working on Boulder Highway, but at least you have a job. 
you know, the, the, the world needs ditch, ditch diggers also. So yeah. um, <laughs> th these companies are paying good money to people, good benefits. Uh, you know, I, I have to pay for my benefits. I, I pay over a thousand dollars for health benefits. I mean, these guys are getting benefits. They're getting things, you know, well, customer um, service as a, as a whole oh, is, is out the window. It's terrible. Point. The it's workforce crazy. is just, you know, it's terrible, but these casinos have to realize that, uh, you, you know, and I, I, I say that, but yet there are some really good tellers in town too. Yeah. You know, I, I know I was I go to the South Point and some great tellers. Yep. Win. I, I take care of them. Win. They're great. Fantastic. I want to tell you something. Everything else. at Win is great. Even though, yeah. even though um, the, uh, the William Hill Caesars threw me out, Caesars Palace has great tellers. Yeah. Their tellers are so schooled; they know exactly what they're doing. Yet yeah. you walk across the street from Planet Hollywood, and it, which is also the same company. Right. They're the lost. Tellers are horrible. Yeah. Tell, mm -hmm. they, they should use a model. Yeah. Should be, in my opinion. The model tellers should be at Wynn right. or Caesars Palace. Well, it's or the local, top, right? It trickles point. down from the top, right? Yes. It's, it's whoever the manager is, the, yeah. the director, right? Yes. And if they're yes. solid, the team is and solid. And you understand, these managers now, they don't... They, it's not like it was five years ago before these companies took over and started booking in-house for them. And they, and they literally lease out their space to another third-party yeah. company. So you understand, these managers were in, in charge of approving bets, approving things, doing... Now they don't need them anymore. Right. They're basically glorified secretaries, the managers. Right. So they don't teach no one nothing. They're all they're mad. They're upset about their own lives. Upset right. about things. Uh, and I'm not again. I'm not. Just, I just told you the good and bad. There's good and bad things. But um, guys, we really appreciate yeah, you guys coming fun. in. Thank you. I'm no. glad you stayed for the whole show. Yeah. Uh, you thank you so much, this. Billy. And I have to sign you a book. I got to get you a book. Please. So you yes. have a book. Yeah. Your, I got someone to want I the really car. love this. I got book more idea. In the I'm car. not just saying that because we're on. Yeah. On thank the you so much. Old timers day. Thank you so much, both of you. It's been an honor and a pleasure to meet you, Billy. Yes. And you're such nice a good guy, you. man. We'll God out. bless you both. Thank right. you, guys. You're welcome.